Our industry does not respect tradition, it only respects innovation. I definitely believe that the way forward for any global organisation, really any group, is to innovate and be the leader in their market or whatever they're in. All the way through university, every time I was in a club or I was running a project, I tried to do something different, I tried to make it exciting and, and feel like it wasn't just any other club out there. A lot of clubs were taking people out to networking functions for one night, because I had people going out every week and mentoring. Just because something's been done some, a certain way for the entire progress of a club or entire time a company's been open doesn't mean it's a way forward for that company or group. We want to be there on the, on the forefront of innovation and making sure that people are thinking better and thinking bigger. That's the world that I imagine, a world powered by innovation, technology, groundbreaking things that are changing the way we work, the way we live. Believe so much in what you're saying that you're not going to stand down, not going to stop doing what you're doing. You really can come from anywhere and end up at wherever your dream may be. I was so passionate about business and about economics and about getting involved that I founded an economics club and a community service club at my high school. But I'm never ever going to give up on something I think is a cool idea or something that I think is a way of the future or something new and exciting. If I can give you any advice, it's try and get involved. Being in community service in high school, why couldn't I have that aspect in my business life as well? And so that's when I came onto this whole idea of social enterprise, which is a whole new way of looking at entrepreneurship and business. Essentially what you're doing is you're taking, if you have capitalism on one side and activism on the other, it's the direct point in between where you're someone who has a big heart for the world, but at the same time you know how to make money. So you put those two skills together, you can imagine the impact that it has on the world. I didn't want to be the person just attending an event. I wanted to be the person who founded the event who was running it. You ask yourself, how am I setting myself apart from everyone else? And if I'm not currently, what steps am I going to take? And what's next for me and my career? Don't stress too much if you don't know what you want to do when school finishes. I, I was really concerned because you have to pick a you have to pick a course and you have to choose a profession. I think there's too much focus put on that when school's finishing. I think you should take your time and you'll and you'll find your place and you find where you want to be. Don't think that you need to know in two years what you're going to do for the rest of the rest of your life. You'll find your feet if you just take your time and, and let it come to you. How many of you don't know what you want to do when you finish school? Yeah, that's exactly how I felt as well. It's n never going to be a clear-cut choice. Being the caliber of students you guys are, you guys are going to have a lot of opportunities, a lot of doors open up to you. If any of you get OP1, the worst thing that will happen to you would be you have all the choices. <laughs> I just followed my instinct and I followed um, what I was passionate about, which was in physics. I didn't really know where that was going to take me in terms of a career or a profession but I did it anyway and the harder you work the more doors are open up to you and all I say is if you're going down a highway say from Brisbane to Sydney you don't need to see the whole journey you just need to see the first 50 meters ahead of you. The network of people around me when I was studying helped me give me um, career direction. When I started doing business I didn't really know what I was going to end up doing. I, did, I, I knew that I wanted to work for myself, I knew that I wanted a business um, but I didn't specifically know what. Probably. It took me five or six years to, 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 to really understand where I wanted to be. At uh, university, I, I met a really a, a great bunch of people. I, I, I'd say there's a, a combination of um, practical and theoretical experience that, that you get from university. You can't, you can't learn to do your job from a textbook. It gives you a, a, a broad and um, basic understanding of the area that you want to be in, but then you really need to get some practical experience as well. And so I think it's just a good grounding to get started and figure out what you like and what you're good at. You can have as many good ideas as you want, but an idea is only worth what you actually do with it. It's just committing to the action. A good idea is the idea that you commit to. There are so many other ideas we have that we would love to do, and right now we just want to make that one idea work really well. It's really important um, yeah, to, to be, have that focus as well. I just want to come up with new, new things at the time. So having someone who can focus you and just being committed to that one idea rather than chopping and changing change, that's a really great point. I don't think failure of an idea can necessarily mean that ideas are bad ideas. Sometimes ideas don't have the time or the place. I and mean, sometimes you need to keep chipping away at things. I know we have only been successful because we've done everything wrong and we've <laughs> failed a lot. But by continuing pushing forward and learning from our mistakes is how we keep proving that our idea is a good idea. You have to be committed to it. If you're not committed to it, then it will be a bad idea because it won't work.
the university is just filled with these people who have done amazing things. Whenever you meet people, always ask them about their backstory because you'll be so surprised. There are just people doing really incredible things and there's far too many for me to actually list, but they're everywhere. I first thought about the experiences that I got at QUT that I wouldn't necessarily have gotten elsewhere. The tagline, QUT, University for the Real World. So we actually got out, got to go out and do a real world project and the project I got to work on was based up in Normanton, which is right up in the Gulf of Carpentaria. It was a group of 16 students, so there were engineering students, architects, interior designers and landscape architects. We actually got to go out and situate ourselves within this remote community and just find out exactly what the community was dealing with. That's just the sort of experience that you don't expect to get at university. Uh, so doing that sort of thing, it, it really opened my eyes to what else I could be doing with my career. But this gave me a taste of it was actually about working with people and communities. It was just opening my eyes, I guess. When we say innovation, we, we sort of seem to mean sort of any interesting change. I'm talking about something which is about, right, how do we actually produce certain sorts of change within, within our society that might be for um, the best. The thing that I want you to take away from, from this is that you have now within you all of the things that are necessary these days to produce something really cool. The cost of actually being an innovator and being entrepreneurial at the same time, right, has, has dropped dramatically. The only thing that really needs to, that you need to concern yourself with is the ability to motivate yourself and others to do stuff. If you want to build stuff, you can build stuff collaboratively. The point about this is that you can be an entrepreneur in all sorts of ways. Right? And by entrepreneur, right, I mean building something cool. You can do it for no money, it's only going to cost your enthusiasm and time, and you can change the world. It's not hard anymore, right? so you should go out and do it. Thank you.